All right, so storing the information you need, variables. After reading the last couple of articles, you should, not, you should know what JavaScript is, what it can do for you, how you can use it alongside other web technologies, and what sure. main features look like from a high level. In this article, we will get down to the real basics and how to get the most basic blocks of JavaScript here. The prerequisites are basic computer literacy, a basic understanding of HTML and CSS, and understanding of what JavaScript is. Objective to gain familiarity with the basics of JavaScript variables. Um, the tools you need. Throughout this article, you'll be asked to type in lines of code to test your understanding of the content. If you're using a desktop browser, the best place to type uh, your sample code is your browser's uh, JavaScript console. Um, for more information, click on this link. However, if we have also provided a simple JavaScript console, embedded in the page below for you to enter the code into. In case you are not using the browser with the JavaScript console easily available, or we'll find an in-page console more comfortable. <clears throat> what is a variable? A variable is a container for a value, like a number we might use in a sum, or a string that we might use as part of a sentence. But one special thing about variables is that their contained values can, can change. Let's look at the simple example. So we got a button that says press me um, with the variable button that has the query selector, document query selector, um, with the button, button on click function. Uh, let name, prompt, what is your name, alert, hello, plus name, nice to see you. Um, let me do the same thing. So I will be, write my name, okay. hello, Ibizzo. nice to see you. Okay, that's pretty neat. So uh, in this example, pressing the button, runs a couple of lines of code. The first line pops a box, a box up on the screen that asks the reader to enter their name and then stores the value in a variable. The second line displays a welcome message that includes their name taken from the va variable value. To, un to understand why this is so useful, let's think about how we write this example without using a variable. It will end up looking something like this. So, var name prompt, what is your name? If name equals Adam, alert, hello Adam, nice to see you. Else if name Alan, alert, hello Alan, nice to see you. Uh, or name equals Bella, alert, hello Bella, nice to see you. Or Bianca, Alert, hello, Bianca, nice to see you. Um, yeah, name equals Chris, hello, Chris, nice to see you, and so on. You may not fully understand the syntax we're using yet, but you should be able to get the idea. If we didn't have variables available, we have to implement a giant code block that checked what the, what the entered name was and then display the appropriate message for the name. This is obviously really inefficient. The code is a lot bigger, even for only five choices. And it just and it just wouldn't work. You couldn't possibly store all possible choices. Um, variables just make sense. And as you learn more about JavaScript, they will start to become second nature. Another special thing about variables is that they can contain just about anything, not just strings and numbers. Variables can also contain uh, complex data and even entire functions to do amazing things. You'll learn more about this as you go along. 
Um, we say variables contain values. Uh, this is important distinction to make. Variables aren't the values themselves. They are containers for values. You can think of them being like little cardboard boxes you can store things in. So in this first box, you have Bob with the true and uh, Boolean and 35 is the number. By the way, Bob is a string. Um, yes. So we are now declaring a variable. To use a variable, uh, you first got to create it. More accurately, we, co we call this declaring the variable. To do this, we type the word var or let, followed by the name you want to call your variable. So let my name or let my age. Here, uh, we're creating two variables called my name and my age. Try typing these lines in now. Uh, yeah, try typing these lines in now in your web browser's console or in the below console. You can open this console in a separate tab or window if you prefer that. After that, try creating a variable or two with your own name choices. All right, so let's try this. My name, or let's try var. My name, and oops, I didn't mean to do that. Bar my name. And, wait, what's going on? Should have gone through. Oh, let the all right, so let my name no, still won't go through huh why do you think that is after that try creating a variable or two with your own main choices hmm. it says right here undefined I still undefined. That's crazy. Hmm. I can do it on here. <laughs> but my name. Oh, I see. Let my age. Let my food choice. And let my drink choice. Okay. I guess that's what's happening. Um, do you have any questions? Nope. Okay. Should I keep going? Yeah, I think he just wants us to continue reading, doesn't he? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. Um, in JavaScript, all code instructions should end with a semicolon. Your code may work correctly for a single line, but probably won't when you are writing multiple lines of code together. Try to get into the habit of including it. Um, you can test whether these values exist in the execution environment by typing just the variable's name. Example, my name and my age. They currently have no value. They are empty containers. When you enter the variable's name, you should get the value undefined return. If they don't exist, you get an error message. Try typing in Scooby-Doo. Let's see. Scooby-Doo. Okay. My age. Wait. My name. Oh, okay. <coughs> 
Excuse me. Um, are we supposed to do the exercises too, or just read? I I did the exercise as well. And read. Um, okay. Don't confuse a variable that does exist, but has no value defined with the variable that doesn't exist at all. They are very different things. In the box analogy you saw above, not existing would mean there's no box variable for a value to go in. No value defined would mean that there is a box, but, there, but it has no value inside it. Okay initializing a variable so the first one was declaring a variable so what we did just now was let my name so how do i remember this as declare well like i was saying yesterday it's all like i want you you want to make an announcement. I'm yeah. buying a new car. So my name, my age, that's declaring. That's all we're saying. I am announcing kind of like yeah. I declare that my the that, 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 that I'm here. <laughs> right. Yes. I declare that I'm here. All right. So once you've declared a variable, you can initialize it with the value. You can do this by typing the variable name followed by an equal sign followed by the value you want to give it. For, um, for example, my name equals Chris. My age is 37. Try going back to the console now and typing in this lines. You should uh, see the value you've assigned to. Uh, I'm sorry, you should see the value you've assigned to the variable return in the console to confirm it. In each case, wait, yeah, in each case, Again, you can return your variable values by simply typing their name into the console. Try these again. My name, my age. Um, all right, let me try this for a second. Um, my name equals me. And my age equals None of your business. <laughs> or how about this? My age is. No, it's supposed to be my age equals. Equal yeah. Is, uh, let me say less than 50. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Uh, let's verify that. My name, EB, and my age, 50. Not really. Can we put negative on it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. You can declare and initialize a variable at the same time like this. Let my dog, oh, okay. Oh, that's what I did. Oh no, no, I didn't. I just did. I just, just uh, initialized it. This is probably what you do most of the time, as it is quicker than doing the two actions on two separate lines. Okay. The difference between var and let. At this point, you may be thinking, why do we need two keywords or uh, for defining variables? Why well, have uh, var and let? Uh, the reasons are somewhat historical. Back when JavaScript was first created, there was only var. This, this works basically fine in most cases, but it has some issues in the way it works. Its uh, design can sometimes be confusing or downright annoying. So let was created in modern versions of JavaScript a new keyword for creating variables that work somewhat differently to var, fixing its issues in the process. A couple of simple uh, differences are explained below. We won't go to all the differences now, but you'll start to discover them as you learn more about JavaScript. If you really wanted to read about them now, feel free to check out our let reference page. 
For a start, if you write a multi multi line JavaScript program that declares and initializes a variable, you can actually declare a variable with var after you initialize it and it will still work. For example, my name equals Chris, function log name, console log my name. So you're doing, you're calling the log name and you're okay so you are the variable is my name okay the variable is my name huh that's wrong something's wrong with that you should have said that at the very top the least anyway oh right here this won't work when typing individual lines into a javascript console just when running multiple lines of JavaScript in the document. Huh, okay. This works because of hoisting. Um, hoisting no longer works with let. If we change var to let in the above example, it will fail with an error. This is a good thing. Declaring a variable after you initialize it makes for confusing, harder to understand code. Secondly, when you use var, you can declare the same variable as many times as you like, but with let, you can't. The following would work. Var, my name is Chris. Var, my name is Bob. But the following would throw an error on the second line. Let my name Chris, let my name Bob. You have to do this instead. Let my name Chris and my name is Bob. Okay. Uh, again, this is a sensible language decision. There is no reason to redeclare variables. It just makes things more confusing. For these reasons and more, we recommend that you use let as much as possible in your code rather than var. There is no reason to use var unless you need to support old versions of internet with your code. It doesn't support let until version 11. The modern Windows Edge browser supports let, let just fine. We are currently in the process of updating the, the course let to use let rather than var. Bear with us. Updating a variable. Um, once the variable has been initialized with the value, you can change or update that variable by sim simply giving it a different value. Try entering the following lines into your code. My name is Bob. My age is 40. I believe you just did that. Okay. And aside from variable naming rules, you can call a variable pretty much anything you like, but there are limitations. Generally, you should stick to just using Latin characters, zero to nine, A, Z, capital A, Z, and their underscore character. You shouldn't use other characters because they may cause errors or be hard to understand for international audience. Don't use underscores at the start of variable names. This is used in certain JavaScript con constructs to mean specific things, so it may get confusing. Don't use numbers at the start of variables. This isn't allowed and will cause an error. A safe convention to stick to is so-called lower camel case, where you stick together multiple words using lower case for the whole first word and then capitalize subsequent words. We've been using this for our variables name in the article so far. Um, make variable names intuitive so they describe the data they contain. Don't just use single, num uh, single letters and numbers or big long phrases. Variables are case sensitive, so my age is a different variable to my age. One last point, you also need to avoid using JavaScript reserved words as, um, words as your variable names. By this, we mean the words that make up the actual syntax of JavaScript. So you can't use the words var, function, let, and for as variable names. Browsers will, 
recognize them as different code name code items and so you get errors you can find a fairly com you can find com ah sorry you can find a fairly complete list of reserved keywords to avoid a lexical grammar keywords good names example age my age in it initial color final output value audio one and audio two bad example one a really okay i've done this before underscore 12 my age lowercase my age uppercase bar document questionable and really long questionable string or yeah error prone name examples bar and document because i believe there's a document dot blah 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 try creating a few more variables now with the above guidance in mind so what i'm thinking is um uh var initial remember we're not they wanting us to oh, stay away from var <laughs> see that's the thing okay but i let initialize let music one let my hair color i those are some of the examples that i'm going to use uh variable types there are a few different di uh, different types of data we can store in variables in this section we'll describe this in brief then future articles, you'll learn about them in more detail. So far, we've looked at the first two, but there are others. You can store numbers in variables, um, either whole numbers like 30, also call, called integers, or decimals numbers like um, 2.4 or 156, also called floats or floating point numbers. I didn't know that. <coughs> You don't need to declare variables types in JavaScript, unlike some other programming languages. When you give a variable a, num a number value, you don't include quotes. So let my age equal 17. Strings, strings are pieces of text. When you give a variable a string value, you need to wrap it in single or double quote, quote marks otherwise. JavaScript will try to interpret it as it's, uh, as that. Ah, interpret it as another variable name so let dolphin goodbye single quote so long and thanks for all the fish and single quote boolean booleans are true false values they can have two values true or false these are generally used to test the condition after which code is run as appropriate so for example a simple case would be let I am alive equals true. Whereas in reality, it will be used more like this. Let test equals six is, um, sorry, six is less than three, which is false. This is using the less than operator to test whether six is less than three. As you might expect, it will return false because six is not less than three. You will learn a lot more about such operators later on this course. <laughs> An array is a single object that contains uh, multiple values enclosed in square brackets and uh, separated by commas. Try entering the following lines into your console. So let my name array equals Chris, Bob, and Jim. They're in one array. And I'll let number array equals array container 10, 15, 40. Once these arrays are defined, 
You can access each value by their location within the array. Try these lines. My name array zero. It should contain, it should return Chris because Chris is zero, Bob is one, Jim is two. Um, my number array two, it should return 40 because zero, one, two, and we're calling on two. The square brackets specify an index value corresponding to the position of the value you want to, you want returned. Um, you might have noticed that arrays in JavaScript are zero indexed. The first element is at, is at index zero. You'll learn a lot more about arrays in a future article. In programming, I'm sorry, objects. In programming, an object is a structure of code that models a real life object. You can have a simple object that re represents a box and contains information about its width, length, and height. Or you could have an object that represents a person and contains data about their name, height, weight, what language they speak, how to say hello to them, and more. Try entering the following line to your co console. Uh, so, <coughs> variable is dog, let dog, your name, spot, breed, Dalmatian. To re retrieve the information stored in an object, you can use the following syntax. So the dog name. Okay, we won't be looking at objects anymore for now. You can learn more about this uh, in a future module. Dynamic typing. JavaScript is a dynamically typed language, which means that unlike some other languages, you don't need to specify the data type a variable will contain, number, strings, arrays, etc. For example, if you declare a variable and give it a value in closing quotes, the browser would treat the variable as a string. Let my string equals hello. It will still be a string in it, even if, the, if it contains numbers, so be careful. Okay. So here, um, 500 is actually a number, but because it's wrapped in a single quote, or can be double quote, it's uh, actually a string. So, this is a string, and this is how we want it to be. Much better. Now this is a number. Try entering the four lines above into your console one by one. You see what the results are. You notice that we are using a special operator called type of. This returns the data type of the variable you pass into it. The first time it's called issue return string. As at that point, my, the, the my number variable contains a string 500. I mean, I'm sorry, the issue contained a string 500. Take a look at, to, ah, take a look and see what it returns the second time you call it. Let's try this for a second. So let my number. Oh, equals. 500, All right? So what we want to do is type of mine, is that it? It's a number. But now I do let my number equals thing 500, okay. Uh-oh. My number has already been declared. Interesting. <coughs> oh, that's right, because we can't do let anymore. So we want my number equals 500. And now we can just say type of my number. And if we get a string. Thank <laughs> you.
Constants in JavaScript. Many programming languages have the concept of constant, a value that once declared can never be changed. There are many reasons why you'd want to do this from security. If a third party script changed such as values, it could cause a problem. With debugging and code comprehension, it is harder to accidentally change values that shouldn't be changed and mess things up. In the early days of JavaScript, constants didn't exist. In modern JavaScript, we have the keyword const, which lets us store values that can never be changed. Const days and weeks, seven. Const hours and days, 24. Const works in exact, exactly the same way as let, except that you can't give a const a new value. In the following example, the second line will throw an error. Const days and week seven, days and week eight, and it's erroring out. But now you should know a, a reasonable amount about JavaScript variables and how to create them. In the next article, we'll focus on numbers in more detail, looking at how to do basic math in JavaScript. <coughs> Okay. All right, so you want me to start the free code camp lesson? Yep, you can go ahead and do All right. I think I'll... Oh, you want me to oh, start? Yeah. yeah we'll do that. Hey, we lost somebody. Somebody just stopped in and... Yeah, it was Max. He said oh. he'll be back in a bit. Or, okay. Uh, I think, no. I don't know. Whoops. Alrighty. Come on. No. Close out of that. Move that out. Alrighty. So this is the one where on basic JavaScript, use bracket notation to find the nth character in a string. Okay, is this where we're at right now? I believe so. I thought that's what you guys said. Um, because we you guys... In, we were in use bracket notation to find the first character in the string. So I think... <laughs> All right. Oops. Okay. Let's go back to learn. Yeah, I think it's like two strings. I mean, two... Um, top, uh, Basic JavaScript. Yeah, see, unfortunately, I did some today, so I don't okay. know where you guys. Um, so, yeah, let's do, like, right out to find the length of the string. So, it will be use bracket notation to find the first character. The first character. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Okay. All righty. So, basic JavaScript. We're going to use bracket notation to find the first character in a string. Bracket notation is a way to get a character at a specific index within a string. Most modern programming languages, like JavaScript, don't start counting at one like humans do. They start at zero. This is referred to as a zero-based indexing. For example, the character at zero in the word Charles is is C. So if var first name equals Charles, you can get the value of the first letter of the string by using first name bracket open bracket zero close bracket. So we are supposed to use bracket notation to find the character in the last name variable and assign it to the first letter of the last name. Hint, try looking at the first letter of first name variable declaration if you get stuck. So basically we are needing to do the first letter of last name variable should have the value L. Now this is a capital L. So we are going to go here. So this is the first letter of the first name and they're wanting us to do the first letter of the last name. Last name is Lovelace. There's two L's, but they're wanting the capital letter. And since we're doing indexing, they said we start at zero. So this would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they're wanting the capital L. So we're going to do here, we're going to uh, do an open bracket zero 
close bracket. Do you understand how that happened? Okay, yes, yes. And we passed. Yay. Did you pass? Um, did I do it? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yes, but I gave it go. Yeah. All righty. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I thought we did this one yesterday. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So basic JavaScript, we're going to learn about understanding string immutability. In JavaScript, string values are immutable, which means that they cannot be altered once they're created. So for example, the following code, var my str equals Bob in quotes because it's a string, so it's got to be in quotes. Now if you do my str open bracket zero close bracket so you're looking for the index um, equals J and quote so they're doing a string um, so cannot change the value of my str to job because the contents of my str cannot be altered note this does not mean that my str cannot be changed just that the individual character of a string literal cannot be changed the only way to change my str would to be assign it with a new string like this so basically they did var so they de they're declaring my str is bob then I forgot what is so because they're not putting var in front so we got to look that up so when they just do my str equals job as a string is would that still be declaring it even though it doesn't have var in front what do you think Evie okay Darn it, my stuff just froze for a minute. Okay. Darn it. Say say that one more time. Okay, because right here we're declaring that my str equals Bob. Right. So then is this another declaration just without var? Or is this just Yes, it's the it's um is the same declaration, yes. Hmm. We're changing, we're changing, um, we're changing the, uh, the J in, uh, in Jello to H. Okay. But basically what they're saying is we can't do that. We can't. Here. Because, okay. So up here, what they're saying is we've declared using okay. VAR. So this is where the whole scope thing and the hoisting comes in at. We cannot change just the one letter. They're wanting to change the index zero, which would be the B, to J. But you can't do that because of the VAR. So what you would have to do instead, you would get rid of this at zero, and you would actually just rename it. So, ah, uh, why is, wow. Did it go it through? No. No, I don't want the command power. Oh, I was, oh, there's my inspect. Gotcha. Alrighty. So now, where's console? There's my console. Oh, no. Oh, that's true. You're totally right. So it would be. Why is my con out oh, there console? Yeah, so we want to remove the the array. Well, no, it's not an array. It's just, we're just dealing with strings. We're not dealing with arrays. Um, so what what they're saying here, because because strings are not are immutable, so you can't mutate a string. So you can't take pieces, you can't do a Frankenstein, basically, is what they're saying. You can't just change one letter. You have to change the whole thing. Okay, that's what, yeah, okay. 
So that's what they mean by immutable. So here then, so that means we would have to get rid of that. The zero, the bracket zero. Oops. And make that equal to the actual word you want to change. It. Yeah, they want it hello world. Mm -hmm. Because we can't mutate just the letter. But I thought we were able to do something like that. It wasn't that like the like 99 bottles of beer on the wall where you would or no Mad Libs. Okay. Hmm. But anyways, okay. I think, well, I think we can, but they have to be in like array. The my my STR my STR needs to be in like an array. I'm sorry. The yeah. world or something needs to be in like an array or something. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to go back to bracket notations again. This time we're finding the nth character. So basically, once again, we can use bracket notations, and your bracket is going to be next uh, on your keyboard, and I forgot to mention this earlier, uh, next to the P. So you want, you're not going to hold the shift. It's underneath the curly brackets to the right of the P. So there's going to be your open bracket and then right next to it is your closed bracket. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what they call bracket notation to get the character of any position within a string. Once again, remember that computers start counting at zero. So the first character is actually the zeroth character. And this is one of my issues I had with Udacity because I'm actually from Germany. So when we learn how to count, we actually count from zero. So when I came to America to learn English, so English is not my first language. I had to read, so I totally forgot how I did things in Germany, and this real, I had a hard time with the math part of the JavaScript through Udacity, and once that triggered, then it, this was easy for me to figure out, but I always forgot. I was like, oh, yeah, because in Germany, it's null, eins, zwei, drei, vier, we always start with zero mm -hmm. in German. Okay. Yep. So... Now, once again, let's try and set the third letter of the last name to equal the third letter of the last name variable using bracket notations. As they, we did with the other one, they're wanting us to uh, look at the second letter of the first name if we get stuck. So here, the third letter of the last name variable should have the value V. So we're looking at last name here. Uh, so we got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I miscounted because there should be eight. But anyway, so the L is zero, O is one, V is three. So we're going to do open bracket, three, close bracket. Everybody agree? Do you agree, E.B.? Yep, I agree. And... Oh, no? It doesn't like that. Okay. So, the third letter, the third letter of the last name variable should have the value V. I want, are they... Cons are, no, I didn't think that the quotes... Because I remember in Udacity, spaces also counted as an index. Oh, okay. But do the quotes also count as an index? No, they do not. I'm pretty sure of it. So and the V should be three. Zero, one, two. Oh, you're right. <laughs> okay, it's getting late. Mona, yeah. Mona's been up too long. I hear you. You got it. Yeah. All righty. Now, okay, we'll do some more bracket notation. Okay, so we're going to use bracket notation to find the last character in a string. Um, oh, remember, this one was a fun one. Okay, so in order to get the last letter of a string, you can subtract one from the string's length. So, for example, var, first name, 